Hi and welcome back. Last week I scraped in the headstock to bed alignment. In response to the last video, I'll put a link up here, in the comment section there was a lot of discussion about ways to stiffen up the bed of the lathe. Bolting it down to concrete, uh, filling the inside section through here with um, epoxy granite, bolting it to an I-beam, various different uh, proposals. In my case, I've got this slab of cold rolled steel left over from a previous job. It's 30 millimeters by 100 millimeters. So what I'm going to do is take the lathe, put four holes in, and just bolt the lathe down. You might be wondering what this old surplus bar of steel was used for. Now this was my first ever first milling machine I guess. It's an old Deckel G1L engraver frame which I picked up from the scrap metal dealers for 20 bucks and I used this bar oops, on top with a Sherline spindle. And a pulley drive as a milling machine for a few years. It was pretty weak, couldn't take more than about one or two tenths of a millimeter per cup. Chatted a lot, but hey, it was better than nothing until I got the mark. First up, I need to transfer punch through the existing holes to find out where to drill, but unfortunately, my transfer punches are too long for this job. So, what I'm going to need to do is make up a new transfer punch, and I'll do that first. This is a bar of silver steel. I think in America it's called something like what, O2 drill rod or A2 or something. The core diameter of a uh, six millimeter screw is gonna be five millimeters, so I need to take off a bit more yet. I'm going to use a boring bar and the top slide to put an angle on it for the point. For, the point. for this I need to turn backwards. If any of you are still using uh, lantern style tool post or tool holders or the four way tool holders, I can really strongly recommend getting a, some form of a quick change tool post holder. This is a phase two uh, Chinese copy of the Aloris or Dorian style tool holders. Cassettes cost like between 12 and 20 bucks on eBay or, uh, or AliExpress, Shars, etc. Uh, I've found them very repeatable. All of the, the ones I've bought have come from various different sources. They, also, they all work fine, they repeat well, they're quite rigid. It's just so much easier having, uh, having a large number of tool holders. You can have every tool set up. It's very quick, switch them out. Don't have to muck around with refinding center heights. Uh, highly recommended. For heat treating it, I'll just wrap a bit of wire around it so I can hold it in the flame and then dunk it in the quenching water. To reduce the amount of scale from heating, I've got this disgusting green gunk. I bought it off eBay, I'm not exactly sure what the chemistry is, uh, but it's supposed to stop the scale when heat treating steel. I'm sure someone will be able to post a comment telling me exactly what it's made of. Maybe I can get some uh, sponsorship for the channel from a to Coconut Milk. The green gunk I put on does insulate it a bit, so it takes a bit longer to heat up than normal. And as you can see, it's hard as glass, so I'll put it back in the lathe, polish it up, and then we'll temper it. I do want this quite hard, so I'll heat it from the bottom to just a straw colour.
Okay, that's a point. I have to apologize for uh, a mistake I've made recently. I was kind of disappointed about the quality of the video, or especially the quality of the display on my dial test indicator on the last video. And I use a pair of Olympus um, Micro Four Thirds cameras, and I just realized that I had both my cameras set for 720p rather than 1080p. So I've reset them back to, to uh, 1080p now, so hopefully all my videos from now on in, you'll get a better uh, video quality. Sorry about that. There was a comment in an earlier video about what a nice drill press this is. It's an Arrow, made in Vienna back in the mid to late 50s I guess. Fantastic machine, hydraulic lift, and for a job like this it's very practical because you can loosen the um, headstock, rotate it off to the side, and use it almost a bit like a radial arm drill. This allows me to clamp the big steel slab down onto the bed without it, without it trying to fall off the side and drill the hole off the edge of the, bit, off the, edge of the bed. So I'll flip it over, raise the head up and use a piloted uh, counter bore to counter bore that hole. Time to now mount this and see what it does in terms of adding rigidity. Now this is just cranked down. We'll see what it's done to the uh, the alignment, and also see whether it's done anything to add rigidity to the lathe. Let's take a look at the effects of this change. So we've now got the lathe bolted down onto its piece of steel, bolted down reasonably tight. I've got the dial test indicator out near the end of the bar. And if we grab the, uh, grab the bed of the lathe and give it a, the same sort of twist as I was giving it before, we can see that I can still twist the bed by a thousandth of an inch in each direction. Things are stiffer than before. I can't easily go much beyond that. <laughs> so the the amount that I can deflect the bed is probably reduced by 50%, but it's still reasonably flexible. Moving up to the next part of this build, I'm going to need to get the saddle um, straight in. The saddle ways at the bottom are pretty horrible as, as anything else and in fact the saddle in this area is so thin that it broke through. That broke through back when I milled out the uh, channel here for a slightly bigger um, cross slide nut. Anyway that's going to need to be scraped in but that geometry of course affects the uh, perpendicularity of the cross slide. I made this cross slide uh, back when I first got the machine. Um, it's laminated out of just uh, mild steel. The laminates are a 6mm piece at the top with the uh, T-slots cut into it, then a 3mm piece um, as the main sheet, and then again 6mm pieces with the dovetails cut into them. It's all glued together with epoxy and screwed with uh, set screws. The set screws were uh, milled down. You may be able to still see the shadow of the threads through there. Uh, it has been scraped before when I first made it. I'll be touching it up again uh, and making sure that it's nice and flat with a new scraping now. I'm going to wrap up this episode at this point. Uh, thanks a lot for watching. Next week we'll move into doing that scraping, getting all this stuff aligned and getting it fitted to the uh, bed of the lathe. And if you like what you see, please subscribe, um, hit a like, I appreciate it. Thanks very much.